7.30, so we'll call the meeting to order. Don, we have a document to sign, order yep. conditions. Yep, from the last one. Legacy meeting. Farms. I've been out of file number at the last meeting, but it does now. applications past two weeks the draft minutes for review April 9th did everyone get a chance to look at those yes, comments no comment. all right can I get a motion to approve the April 9th minutes so moved and a second please a second all in favor aye, aye. and opposed okay all right LA design 24 Wedgwood Drive this is an informal discussion I think they might be on their way. Okay. We just got notice from someone who was at town hall. I so must have thought the meeting was there. Okay. All right. So how about Polte Homes, three Winsog Way? Review a certificate of compliance application. Yes. Uh, further information was submitted from um, the homeowner and the um, uh, builder, the applicant, the uh, COC. Uh... Do you want to come up and sure. give them give them an overview? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you gave me high copies. Um, I don't have them. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of just refer up there. Sure. What we kind of came up with, um, I guess Pulte also put together a list of things that they were going to do to make sure that this didn't happen again with further homes, especially. It sounds like most of everything is done on south, but they're still building on north, so mm -hmm. to make sure that everything was in compliance there. And then um, what we kind of came up with was moving the fence line in, in one corner of the yard, which would give you back about, I think it was about 1,100 to 1,200 square feet which then it's now just grass. And what I would do is overseed it um, with basically kind of like whatever um, Don recommends in terms of kind of natural plants so that it ends up overgrowing. Um, and that was about equal to the area of the patio and shed um, that are kind of basically not entirely in compliance right now. And, you know, a lot of the area that kind of technically isn't in compliance isn't actually the patio it's actually kind of natural plantings anyways just with mulch around them mm -hmm. um, and some grass area um, so we could do that so we're going to move the fence in there as you can see kind of with the green line um, so that it's going to be laser oh, if you want to yeah it. awesome so basically kind of moving it in where the fence line is here now moving it in here um, which would allow me to keep the raised bed garden area it's here intact and this area is about equal to the area of the patio and a small corner of the shed there that's affected. Okay. Um, it would largely keep the fence intact um, and I would be the one footing the bill to actually move the fence in and do all the uh, overseeding in here. Um, and then afterwards Pulte would install the permanent barriers, um, move this one slightly to here behind the fence line and then this one will be moved to, I guess they're recommending kind of right over here at the new corner of the fence um, so that this kind of issue didn't arise again if we ever sold the property um, mm. and moved so that the next homeowner would know that, you know, where the barriers are so they don't run into similar issues. Okay. All right, that seems reasonable to me. Um, why are you footing the bill? Um, Pulte didn't offer. Jeez. Um, and at this point, honestly, this is like, this is my fourth or fifth meeting. This is kind of dragged on. I feel like trying to get them to pay for it would be like getting you know water out of a stone. Yeah. And at this point, if it provides a compromise that everybody can live with and you know allows me to really kind of keep the integrity of my yard intact and gives me kind of the things that honestly I care most about, at the end of the day, you know, I can make the money back later i can't you know make back yeah. the peace of mind of having this drag on and yeah yeah okay um i don't think that's right myself but you know i think the 
commission will, you know, let Pulte know that we're displeased with that. I don't know if that will help at all, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's fair that you're footing the bill. But anyways, does that sound okay to everyone? Yeah, except for that part. Yeah. So I just, I have this question. I, I feel for you, I don't think you should be footing the bill. Um, I don't know if our decision is based on this as well as the Pulte letter, or are these two separate things for us to discuss? Because my question on the Pulte letter is, reminder to Legacy Farms property manager about the PIBs. But if we look at the map that you brought us, I think it says probable location of PIBs. Do, do any of those exist? So if we're reminding other residents or Pulte, as the Pulte letter says, are we reminding them about things that don't exist now that we know on maps, but they never put out there? And <coughs> do you understand my question? No. I no. So I look at this map. May I have the laser pointer? Yeah, please. Thank you. And I think I'm going to shoot myself in the eye. If I'm not careful. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that say probable PIB location? Proposed. Oh, proposed. So that's, where they, that's where they were supposed to go. So they were supposed to put one here. And they were supposed to put right. one here. So my question: those were never put there. Right, because right? no, when they yeah. went out to put them in, there was, you know, existing disturbance. So my question yeah. is, if that's happened other places, but Pulte says, oh, we're going to remind all the residents about the PIBs, but they don't exist, what does that achieve? I think earlier they said this was the only... I think this was the only one the only that, was one they, that had a they significant issue. They were able to yeah. them everywhere, yeah. except for this one. Yeah, of all the ones I looked at, this was the only okay. one that did Yeah, because right. it was just a big lag from when I guess they were supposed to put it in, and then I put the fence in, and then when they finally came around to do it, they okay. couldn't get into it because the fence was there. All right. And in essence, the, the fence and the signage is acting as the, as the PIB. The new one. Right, so you, you know the new the new fence line here. So when this is all moved, I would think the commission would want to get an as built that shows where the fence is now. You know um, where the signs went in. I think Pulte should be providing that. Yeah, we'll ask Pulte you know? for that. And then they yeah. should say the the fence line and the signage act as the PIB. So the next owners will know mm -hmm. right. this area is wild and that area is the landscape so we'll request that from Pulte you don't have to worry about that okay. thank okay. you yeah. can I just steal the laser pointer back for one second um, on their map um, they indicate so this t I think each one of these dots is a panel of the vinyl fence that's on the side and I it looks like they're indicating that we're gonna lose a panel of the vinyl here Mm -hmm. Would it be okay with you guys if we kept the panel? Because this is almost like a half panel where it kind of slopes down and then go basically from here to here because that gives me a little bit of space because the way that they have it is basically going to be kind of right next to the raised bed garden. And I don't know if there's going to be even, I don't know how much space is even there, but that gives me a little bit extra of a buffer. And if you need a little bit of extra, I guess, land to make up for it, I also have the strip, I, you can't really see it on this map, but the strip that goes this way towards Legacy Farm South. Mm -hmm. um, and I can do, oh, there we go, sweet. Um, mm -hmm. So over here, where I'm happy to do some overseeding and stuff back here, so as not to really interfere with what my neighbor's done there, but this is all <laughs> actually still technically mine and I can do some overseeding there kind of behind the sh his shed so that I don't interfere with the fruit trees and stuff he planted, mm -hmm. but so that this area can kind of grow a while to make up for that little extra strip. Would yeah, that, that be agreeable with you guys? Yeah. Sounds okay. reasonable. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we apologize that you had to go through this, um, and uh, we appreciate you coming in talking with us and, you know, coming to some resolution on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully that'll work for you. Perfect. Yeah, so. thank you guys for giving us a chance to work it out rather than just mandating that we tear everything out. So yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Right. Do you guys need anything else from me? Unless we end up in the ER. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully I don't need any of you or your children there. Um, perfect. And then will Don just send out kind of the, I guess, minutes or whatever that just shows that I'm set, I'm good, everything is, once we kind of have colonial fence, move the fence, Everything is good from there. Or I write up a follow-up letter, just saying after the work is after the restoration work is completed, you know, revised as built should be shown, showing the new PIB for the fence and the, and the battalions. Yeah. Okay.
perfect. And then, I don't know, we kind of talked about this a little. In terms of the overseeding, do you guys have an idea of what you want us to do for the overseeding? Because right now it's just grass. I don't know what will happen if I just sprinkle seed on top of it, whether that will take. Do you want us to kind of disturb that soil and then put the seed down? Um, I was thinking you just amend it with, um, with some loam and put a native seed mix, you know, and then sort of let it go. And kind of see what grows. Yeah, basically. what, we, what yeah. we were talking about, it would probably be a better time would be to do this in the fall, yep. you know, when the, when the grass stops growing. He could, do, he could do a short mow, he could, you know, throw out some loam and seed, put in the seed mix, rake it in, and see if he can get some germination in there. Okay. Yeah. You know, and some to build a pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank Very you guys. Good. I appreciate yep. it. Thank you. LA so Design. LA Design? They're in the audience. They just get in. Hello, LA Design? La Design? LA Design? Yes, that's 24 Wedgwood? Hi there, Don Good Scott, evening. landscape architect. My client's owner. Um, I colored up these plans for y'all to look at. There's uh, there's five copies anyway. I also have some photographs of some of the areas. I only have one copy of these. So um, we're just coming for you for some guidance and uh, information. Okay. And so um, what uh, Mr. Lyons would like to do is to expand his backyard with uh, additional lawn area. He has young children and would like a larger backyard to be able to play and, you know, have space for the kids. It's a very narrow backyard at, at, at present. And so in doing so, we'd like to move the lawn area from the existing fence line um, back to the 25 foot setback. The fence line is uh, labeled there. And where you see the dark brown line is uh, the relocation of the fencing to the back of the lawn area that we would be proposing. And there's a large oak tree back there which would remain. Uh, but the other trees forward of that would be uh, removed. There's also two ash trees right by the, the existing fence gate that will also remain. So we will still have a lot of tree cover back there. There's, uh, there's two big ash trees and an oak tree basically along the fence line that will remain and then everything between that and the house would be opened up to lawn area. And then to uh, compensate for some of that buffer loss, there's a side lawn area next to the driveway. These are photographs of that. Um, See that's, right here? that's right, that's unvegetated, just dirt. And, uh, and it's right next to a large dry, uh, um, impervious area uh, which is sheeting off to, to, to that dirt area which quickly flows down to the wetland area. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to vegetate that with shrubs and ground covers uh, to restore that area to, to vegetation. And also, as you can see, there's also a disturbed area where there's an old fire pit and you can see that in some of the photos. Mm -hmm. We'd also be looking to restore uh, that fire pit area that's currently disturbed with additional shrubs which would then be out the area outside of the fence. So we'd like to restore some of the disturbed areas in the buffer and as an exchange for expanding the lawn area down to the 25 foot setback. Okay. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? Yep. You could have the disturbed area, but that's on the property. Like the runoff you're talking about is from the large and purpose areas coming from the driveway. Right, right. As well as the house runoff, you know, the roof lines right, and everything. Right, so it's like self-inflicted. Right. I mean, it's an existing condition. So this is an area alongside the driveway, which is receiving those surface waters. But it was caused by the development of the property and the house. I think they had a garden there or something. We but moved in in November. Okay. Uh, but okay. currently okay. there's okay. no vegetation. That, yeah, we just moved here from Maryland. So yeah. So, so this is to when you moved in. Yes. Yeah. So how it's disturbed, we're not certain. But we see it as a disturbed area, and we see it as an opportunity to uh, enhance the buffer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Who, who was chair? Just yep. as background, the um, there was a, for the development of house. It was uh, DP file number one eight eight seven fifty one. Um, here's the as built plan. Sort of shows. Um, That's also this. The limited work, and uh, so the area that they're talking about here uh, was uh, had some riprap uh, place to. I assume to take up some of the uh, yeah you can kind of see it in some of these photos so the riprap is mostly covered it's mm -hmm. mostly over here these stones are sort of delineating a little planting area that the previous owner may have had um, this plan is from 2004 and at the time when the when the Commission received the ASBO plan obviously um, I can show you the approved the approved plan as well from uh, 94 so is this the subdivision plan or the septic plan? This is uh, under the order of conditions. Okay. This is the plan the commission approved under the order of conditions for the construction of the house. So basically, house, uh, driveway, well, and I'm going to work through here. Mm -hmm. And when we get the Asbill plan, this was not approved. It was beyond the limit of work. So they issued an enforcement order to have it um it was like a playset uh, back here. So it looks they, like where the fire pit was approximately. Yeah, so back in 04, um, everything was removed and I think allowed to go wild. And so now it's 2019, so the area still looks disturbed with like stone dust. Mm. So whatever happened after the commission issued a, a COC in 04, like you can see some pictures, I think maybe on the second page of it, what you have in front yeah. of you. Yeah. See it. Uh, yeah. That's what happened later on, right after it was approved, but before you purchased right. the property, obviously. Fifteen years before. <laughs> so through the through the chair, um, when they went through this process, was there any PIB labeled on the plan, like that tree line? Maybe does that follow the the fence, the existing fence, or no, do we uh, have any? It was just reference? filed. It was it was pre bylaw, so yep. it was just filed under the act. So um, I don't uh, I don't believe there was any ongoing conditions for a PIB. Mm -hmm. Let me get the order right here. Yeah, it was just approved as presented. So there was no, but it was a subdivision, so it would have had that, I mean, a grandfather subdivision, so it had the 25 limit of work, 50 limit of structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So I think they were trying to, it, I think you were trying to get some feedback if, if if they were going to file an RDA, if, if you guys thought, you know, would it really need an NOI? Yeah, I don't think it is going to require an NOI. Um, I think an RDA should be fine. So that's number one. Yeah, and this is informal, obviously. So number two would be. Um, you know, my sense is is that the grass area in the 25 to 50 foot buffer zone is going to be difficult to approve. So I think, you know, this area in here is something that the commission would be amenable to, but the grass area from the 25 to the 50 foot, I think, you know, we probably want to see that remain um, undisturbed and native. Even with the, the swap? Well, with the swap, um, in that restoration area here is 660 square feet, right? Which is also between the, the resource line. Right. And, uh, and I think it is within the 25 foot buffer as well. And then the, uh, and then the, the still disturbed play area we, which we would like to vegetate would also be restoring yep. that same area. Well, 
through the through the chair. I agree. I wouldn't approve going anything back. closer than fifty. Mm -mm. For your, I don't you know for you because it you see the old plans. You kind of knew what you're. You should have known what you're getting to when you bought it. Um, and even the stuff on the side of the driveway, I feel like that wasn't maintained properly. But um, no, I don't feel comfortable extending the lawn personally. And I might, I mean, even would like to see like whatever trees were removed be replanted somewhere. I'd be, ha I'd be happy to do that. And I'm more than happy to give up that area. And you tell me what needs to be planted and we'll do it. The fact of the matter is, is that there are wild animals behind us. We know that. I hear the coyotes every single night. I have a four-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old, and I can't let them out into the yard, be, and I can't put them in the front of the yard because we see the coyotes in front of our house. So I need a fenced-in area to protect my toddlers. Where I'm not exaggerating. At its narrowest point, the yard goes, Melissa, from where you're sitting to me. I can't throw a ball. We can't kick a ball. There's no area to play there in a safe zone that there aren't animals that can get to my children, and there have been animals in the neighborhood. So I'm coming here in good faith to be able to say, let's follow the right rules, and if I need to give up other areas of my property to replace it to exactly to the letter that you tell me to, I'm more than happy to do that in spades. But I'm not a reckless person. The person who lived there before this didn't take care of it. And that burnt fire pit, just to put it in proximity, if this was my dining room or my kitchen where we have our breakfast and our dinner every single night, I look at this every single day. It is a massive circle of, I mean, as, as long as this table and round of just burnt yes, earth. As Don said, it's mm. a, well, it's, it's stone dust. <laughs> stone dust, but it really should be taken care of. And I'm more than happy to give that back and put whatever needs to be there with the right soil. I'm not saying develop that, but we're more than happy to give that. And then also part of our front yard, the driveway area, to be able to give it. But I get what you're saying, 2020. I, I, I'm not from Massachusetts. I'm from a different state. So none of this was awareness to me. I had no idea. And real estate agents don't tell you this stuff. Mm -hmm. so, no. so, I mean, what I'm asking for here is a, a trade and meeting all those precautions. And we, we plan on setting roots here. I'm not looking to destroy the property that I live on, uh, that I pay taxes on. Um, no, I, 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 I get it. You know, it's, uh, um, you know, it's a small area. Um, but again, you know, the 25 to 50 foot is just, you know, we don't allow any disturbance beyond 50 feet um, in the buffer zone uh, under the new bylaw. And we try to minimize the amount of disturbance between the 50 and 100 foot. Even though when the house was built in 1995, is that right, 1994? Yeah. So would it be grandfathered into the rules at that time? Was it 25 feet at that time? It was 50 foot uh, for the limit to build and 25 foot for no disturbance rate, right? none. Yep, those are the setbacks for a grandfathered lot. But obviously, you know, obviously I think some of the areas weren't maximized on the, right. on the lot. And if I could reach, there's one other area. I'm sorry, I don't have a copy. Do you have a copy over here? In addition to this, there's this area here by the house that mm -hmm. I'd be happy to add vegetation to make up more feed. It falls within that line. We don't really use this side of the house. Mm -hmm. So I could add more vegetation there. So through the chair, I think, I mean, from our perspective, it's more important to have what's closer to the wetland protected because that's what the buffer does for us is provides that zone between the wetland you know and where the activity is so I think vegetating you know in you know past your past the yard on the other side isn't really gonna necessarily help us protect the wetland area um, I I live in a house in a very similar setup to this where we're right up against um, the wetland and uh, the buffer zone and we don't you know our backyard we play in our front yard we have a fence in our front yard um, right up to the street my kids play baseball in the front yard I have three kids as well and woods behind and you know I don't think our neighborhood allows for that is um, an HOA for fencing 
for it, not in the front. And it's a uh, Highland Park. I don't think it's in the because I looked into that uh, option because I, I really didn't care where the fence was. It's I just want them to be protected. Hmm. So the, <coughs> this this shows an existing fence. Does that fence exist? There's a fence in the backyard. There. Yeah. And is that not adequate for your concerns? It's, unfortunately, it's not. Because? Because it's very narrow. Well, it's narrow and sloping. You're talking about the animals, no? Yeah, so um, it's informal. You know, that's you can propose what you want and bring it before us, and then, you know, you can see if the commission approves it or not. Um, I think, you know, again, just to emphasize the 25 to 50 foot is an area that, um, you know, I think, as I said, we like to see that preserved and native. Um, this other area in here, I think we'd be amenable to. The area between the 50 and 100 foot. So that's the, uh, I think that's the advice that we can give you. So, so even if we left that area where we're showing the proposed fence up to the 50 foot line, um, it, we, would we be allowed to leave the fence inside the 25 up to the 25 and then you know leave that strip area uh you know as leafy planting bed um and yeah, leave the I, two I trees be, that are in there yeah, i think i'd be fine with that just the fences there to prevent the animals from getting into well, the that's backyard. why I'm, that's yeah, what that, i'm thinking if we can just have the fence yeah, and have if the you space you want to leave the fence in there that's fine, yeah, and I then mean, you know you just let this the area kids can still play in the leaves. Yeah, and no, no, through the chair, I I kind of disagree because if you move the fence all the way back there, somebody's eventually going to mow the lawn all the way over there. There's the there's creek, massive trees and rocks there. You can't. There's no. And to be honest with you, so how are you going to make it lawn as proposed? So in that area, they're really. Again, do you have a copy, right? right so if I can reach here. So these are very large trees back here with a lot of rock. Okay. What I really want to do is just fence in this area and then grass here. If we want to put a swing set or an area to throw the ball. I, I, I'm not taking down these one, two, big, three. The four, larger trees. The larger trees. Um, they but look very nice and they're, they're a part of the, the environment. We're not looking to take that down. But what I do want to do is fence in this area here. Why wouldn't you just put the fence at the 50? Uh, I. I I think the other part, I just want to get to the other point around the grass, it's, it'd be tough, difficult to grow grass there because there's not going to be a lot of sunlight because it is protected back there. Well, it's heavy tree canopy. Yeah. Um, so we're just wondering if that was just left as uh, shrubs and plantings uh, and have the fence behind that. Because then, the, you know, it just gives more space for the kids to play in even though it's left as a natural state. I, I'm, I'm not sure if I heard an answer to Carrie's last question. Why not put the fence here? Because we're taking away additional area that his kids would like to play in, inside the fence. We're just not going to put grass there. Right. And that can be the condition of the decision. Through the chair? Yes. Um, how tall is the fence you have and what you're proposing? Uh, we're going to keep the same fence, just continue, we're just going to order the identical? It's about a four foot uh, aluminum uh, vertical I can't remember it's four or five, I think it may be five. Five, yeah. I was going to say a four foot isn't going to keep coyotes out. Well, so that was, so it's not four, um, and that's why I go back to five, because when I, when I moved here and I learned about these coyotes, um, well, the the four is about here. No, it's it's yeah, a five foot fence. Here. It's a five foot fence, and I'm, you know, I'm I'm sure that if they were ambitious enough, they could they could get over it. Mm -hmm. but yeah. I didn't want to put a ten foot fence. I mean, I couldn't. First off, I couldn't find one. I was trying to get a six foot aluminum fence, and uh, Lowe's and Home Depot didn't sell it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if the coyotes want to get in, a fence isn't going to prevent. Or them. they'll dig underneath it. They'll dig underneath it. They'll jump over it. They'll go around it. Um, so. Okay. So that's, I think, you know, informally that's the feedback we can give you. And then so just to recap, so if I could reach, so this is not going to make a difference. Is that what I'm hearing? To, to trade, to develop this? Because this is all wetlands right here. Right. So to, to add. 
it's not really shown that way on the plan. I mean, Don, you were there. You saw it. Yeah. You saw the wetland um, marker. Was, I think that was the other point. But if this you look at this plan, right here. you can see where the wetland line and the 25-foot buffer is very close to the driveway. I think that's more accurate. I was just guesstimating to create this plan quickly. Oh, you see I on see this it. plan that's where the wetlands, that was actually delineated back in 04. So this, this land right here, everything that you see here is all wetlands. Okay. And so we would be adding to it. So to your point earlier around the side of the house, it's not helping because it's not right in front of the wetlands. This area is. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. uh, the wetland depicted on this plan is probably from 94, you know, so it's mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. not accurate. And I think the question oh, this on this one, it's about delineated in 04. Well, 94. The, the, yeah, I mean, basically the, the delineation was from was from 94 when the plan was was generated mm. then the asbil came 10 years later mm -hmm. in 04 so they just so used the, the, yeah you know that wasn't redelineated then you're saying right that line is still a 98 they just used the same i guess uh, i guess <coughs> what i'm trying to say is i don't know how accurate this right. line is in the real world today because it would have been delineated probably subject to yeah. But when they didn't build a road, when they didn't build houses, now there's a I know road. you were on site, but you know how close the wetland is to the driveway. I, right. Yeah. I, I guess that's and that's so what I, I was that's what I was telling the uh, the property owner when I was when I was out on the site. I was saying this black line didn't show up in the real world, so I didn't have right. a reference point where right. it was. You know, so typically what the commission that's what I think the commission would want to figure out. Would they want to just go by this line, or would they want the well, the you know, RDA the, is. Would they, the, want to, the, would they want a delineation put in the in the field and then have the flags reflected on a on a, on a survey plan for actually of uh, the the buffer zones that you that you're looking at? You can yeah, still do it, that as part of an RDA yeah. application. The, a wetland boundary from '94. So in 1995 is when the whole definition of wetlands changed under the Act. So there was a significant break from pre-95 to post-95, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which, you know, could affect it in either direction, but. Right. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to limit the work to this area here depicted between the 50 and 100, my inclination is, is that and I'll let the other commission members weigh in on this. We're not going to ask you to incur the cost of going out there and reflagging it. You know, if you are adamant about, you know, wanting to extend this down closer to the wetland area and then offering this as uh, proposed mitigation for that, then I think that would warrant um, probably looking at the actual. Um, wetland boundaries as they exist today, which would require someone to go out and flag it. But again, that's a cost for you to incur to get someone to do that. You know, it's probably a few thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. yeah, with surveying. With, sur with the surveying and then the plan. So I don't know if that's something that you you would consider uh, or you, you want to do, but just, you know, it's something to keep in mind. Okay. I'll do it. I, I want this area for my kids. Okay. And, you know, the other restoration areas is to restore that uh, play area as well, this area down here. Right. Yeah. So that would yeah, and I, would, and I would pay for that as well. I mean, not only for an eyesore, but yeah. for, for, for the conservation area. Somebody, took, somebody was reckless and really did a bad job there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would pay to have that area restored. And that's outside the fence. That's just not only an eyesore, but it's better for the, better for the conservation. So... Right. Whatever the requirement is to to, to to cover that up, and whether it's dirt and and um, wild, I'll, I'll I'll do that. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Well, from my perspective, you know, I am one of the tree huggers in the conservation commission, and I live adjacent to Lake Whitehall, which has its own share of critters, and oh. we've had one of our own child and 25 foster kids that have lived with us at various times and we've never had an issue with any critters coming into the yard and creating a problem. 
difference. All I'll say. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Marusa to Pito Pecoro Drive. Thanks, Hi. Good evening. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Fine. My name is Heather Marusa. I live at 2 Peter Pecoro Drive, which is a difficult address. Um, we are looking, I have my board, we're looking to do a few things. We live on the old mill pond, Blood's Pond, mm -hmm. uh, the old site of, I think it's called Perry's Mill. Let me move it down. Um, I delineated the wetlands, wetland scientists, I know Mr. Verrill here. Um, I delineated them uh, based on hydrology, soils and vegetation. Um, we're looking, I guess what I'm looking for tonight is some guidance from all of you regarding how I can go about permitting this. We would like to put a small dock here. We love the pond. We want to be able to get out there, kayak. Um, I go out there myself to clean the beaver to sewers. And when he is really active, I go and I pull some logs out um, so that we still have flow going in and out of the pond because mm -hmm. There are some times where he, he goes a bit crazy. Um, we'd also like to put a barn in. That would be in the outer buffer zone here. Uh, you can see we have two separate locations. It depends on um, the bylaws for the, for the width from the road. I have to figure out where my husband wants the barn exactly. But I don't, and then we would also like to vista prune. We have a lot of humongous trees to have a lot of humongous dead branches on the bottom. We, we'd, we'd love to bring that up to be able to enjoy our view a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, and, oh, these would be my hay bales. Um, part of my notice of intent, I would, in back of the barn here, uh, where there is some lawn, I would put some markers there just to denote the 50 um, as part of mitigation. Um, for the barn. I think my biggest question is for this dock here. Mm -hmm. It's right on the water's edge. It'll come right from the water's edge out about 10 feet. I have a lot of invasives. A lot. I am full of glossy buckthorn. I am full of bittersweet. I have been trying to deal with them. I have bittersweet so big that it's trying to strangle rocks. It's this big around. And I've been cutting it with an electric pulse saw, but it keeps coming back. Can I use that as mitigation for something like this? Or what would you see as mitigation for a dock? I want to be ready when I bring a notice of intent in here for it to be properly done and not be continued a few times for something like a dock. What type of dock is it going to be? Is so, it a, uh, just like remove a floating dock that you remove? Or is it going to be Yeah, something? so it's going to have those big uh, tires on the bottom. You know what I'm talking about? It's going to have poles in it. We're going to put a big board on the bottom to disperse the weight so that mm -hmm. doesn't just sink into the substrate. So there'll be something holding it up. Um, it can be, it's a dock that can be removed if you guys prefer that it be removed during some seasons. That's up to you. Sometimes I think that causes more disturbance on the substrate than. So is it a floating dock worth. or is it something that's going to be. It's going to have poles. Okay down into it. I mean, they're not big. It's not like huge pilings or anything. They're small poles. It's meant to be a dock we can move. It's just for mm -hmm. wheels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like a boathouse dock or anything like that. It's small aluminum, just for our kids to go out, get in a kayak, go fishing. Not yeah. that we can ever catch anything out there. Um, <laughs> they're elusive. Um, so I'm just looking for guidance from you guys so that this can be a successful filing. I didn't want to waste time coming in and out constantly. Um, and obviously during site visits and whatever else. You guys so is the dock going to remain there all year round? Are you going to take it out during the winter? That's something we can discuss if you're more comfortable taking it out. But 
sometimes things like that, especially if I have a swamp mat or if I have a board under it, taking that in and out can be pretty, uh, pretty gross and pretty disturbing for the wetland itself. So obviously that's not the scale. Um, no. <laughs> Thank you um, for noticing. Uh, those, there are some arts and crafts going on. I am subject to what my kids had in the craft closet. It's not to scale, but I do have a drawing that my husband so expertly did. Um, all across the back here, which would be the land side, would be six feet. All the way out, it would be ten. And then there would be two two foot by five foot sections on the sides, just mm -hmm. to give it some more stability when we're out there. The, the poles would be on the main part that <laughs> sort of looks like the top of the yeah. tee there. Okay. So it's not to scale. It was just the general idea of where it was going to go right. was what I was doing with that. Yeah, I think we would probably want to see something that is not put in permanently, you know, that you can take out okay. in the winter time. You, and the commission's permanent docks on Lake Bass Monocas, that both ways permanent. It all depended on what the apple wanted, but if you, there have been permanent ones, they had to file an NOI um, right. for it. And, um, so if it's not permanent, it's still an NOI, but it, right? Right. I'm just, I'm just wondering about I'm like just the trying, fee I'm schedule. I'm just trying to give them some background. No, I know, yeah. You know, um, and obviously this isn't a great pond, you know, the Lake Bass Monocas, all the docks got chap they were subject to chapter 91 as well right where this that would be the case right yeah, this yeah. would just be under the act on the bylaw yeah but it's not like it's unprecedented the commission right. has approved permanent docks on a, on a pond before obviously if you wanted on their pro it wouldn't go over the property line no you know? so yeah that would be a very big dock based on the scale yeah <laughs> be huge <laughs> and then the area where you're considering putting the barn in. What is that presently? Is that presently, disturbed lawn area or what? what all right. That? So presently, yes, a lot of that is lawn. Um, as I was saying before, the bittersweet and the glossy buckthorn has taken over. The area beyond where the tree line is, you can see the little scalloped line. That's a tree line. Further that way, uh, if you just look at it quickly, it does look like a natural area. It is not. I have found sprinkler heads in there. Mm -hmm. There is a magnolia there. So that was clearly a landscaped area mm -hmm. that was left to... Uh, it hasn't been manicured in a while. It hasn't been, it, and it needs a lot of help because mm -hmm. it's all invasive, and that's why, because it was supposed to be a garden and it nobody took care of it, and now all of the crazy invasives are in there ripping it apart so okay yeah so I think we're okay with you taking you know doing the invasive um, plant removal you know as long as it's by hand you know bringing oh, yeah. machines in to do it mm -mm. the dock you know I prefer to see uh, something that's not permanent but you know that's up to you you permitted both okay um, it would be filed under NOI. Yep. And presumably you want to do this all under one filing and not separate, right? Presumably. I just don't. I mean, we can do the doc now. You know what I mean? We have right. the stuff for it. and um, The barn is a ways longer, away. Longer term plan. Yeah. Um, and I know I have a few years. But I just don't. I don't know that we're going to have our act together quite yet on that. So okay. Could that, could the barn... Well, it's three years you would have, and then you can extend it. Yeah. Um, so. Could the barn in any way, shape, or form ever be an RDA where it is? Uh, right now, are you proposing a limit of work inside the 50? Is well, I could pull that out. That? Yeah, if it was outside I could pull the waddles the all outside the 50. I'll pull everything outside the 50. Because I have the room to pull everything in and then denote the 50 with granite bounds. Because then that's going to save me. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, the then I can get... Fees and, it's yeah. going to save me filing fees, but it's also going to make it easier time-wise to figure out exactly what we want to do with the barn, exactly where we want to put it. Mm -hmm. 
I, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to juggle all of these projects at once. The Vista pruning, I can put in with either. That doesn't matter. But these two. <clears throat> okay, so the Vista pruning. What did you want to do with that? No. I just want to, I have massive pine trees out there. Um, massive. And there's just a lot of dead, scraggly branches. So you just want to remove the dead branches? bring them up a little bit, yeah. I think I'm okay with that. Well, removing dead branches for the ongoing health and vigor of the tree is typically a yeah. you know, request for exempt activity. Yeah. It's when you start taking out the live branches, you know, you start getting into the, the vista program. You know? Right. I mean, it's a weird area. It's, it's a pond. There's a tiny BVW over there. And then it's just pine needles and giant pines mm. so it doesn't you know it's not a very gradual thing so there aren't a ton of giant trees in there there is some dead stuff in there that is a little worrisome when my kids are running around back there you guys did give me permission thank you to um to cut some danger trees back there but then our all three of our garages broke so now we're recovering from that so we haven't cut them down yet okay. um but you know there's a few things that Maybe if Don wanted to come out, I could check with him about when I get closer to doing this. Yeah. Um, okay. Or NOI is a site walk anyway, so we could talk about it then. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the commission? I'm curious about the barn. What do you envision? I mean, I, I envision a barn as a big structure. It's uh, about 24 by 24. It will have a loft space that my husband intends to use as an office so, because so we're loud. Full, full foundation. Yep. It'll have the, the frost wall. Yep. And it will house, you know, the tractor and things that we have currently in our garage. But it's intended on, on being kept nicely and I'm really trying to get rid of the bittersweet and all the nasty stuff in there. Okay. All right, so. Does that help you out? It helps me out, except did we come to a decision on if I could do the barn as an RDA? If it's outside the 50, I think you should be fine. Okay. Thank you. That helps me a lot. Thank you very much. So Great. do you know that once upon a time, Boston Harbor featured a wharf known as T-Wharf? Oh, it's right there. It's perfect. <laughs> it's Maybe historic. that's why it's so big. <laughs> yes. Yes. I will bring a to scale <laughs> version for the real filing. How old are your kids? Five and seven. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit braver, but we just got a dog that's terrified of the pond, so we gotta <laughs> work on that. <laughs> He's not a water dog. Yeah, there's giant snapping turtles in that pond that um, reportedly go after kids. They don't. I know what you're talking about, and they don't. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm they not go after gonna. the kids that go after them with a stick. That like I've been out there many a time and he never bothered me, but now he won't. So, okay. Um, very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I don't want a coyote in my backyard. All right. Um, Fisher cats? Fisher cats? They're cute. No. <laughs> I got, not, not when they're eating your cat out your bedroom window. Not, it's a tough I, day. <laughs> I got, I got, so my wife grabbed me yeah, by my pants to pull me uh, away from taking pictures. Thank you very much. Yeah. How about you yeah. told me ahead of time he was hoping to little one. It was very mad because uh, mom kicked it out. Four and canine for about this okay. long. Okay. They're the most impressive request to continue the other ones. Okay. You could just open up 33 at this point. Well, that's a continuation 33 yeah they're all they're all yeah. actually yeah. legally open right. but before sometimes we would talk you know about the whole thing right I think you might want to just focus on 33 of the road not the houses you know right okay and then, got it um, when you get to that you just look at Lennon Street not, not Bob no. no. yeah no. okay um, Truzy zero Leonard Street this is a continuation of a notice of intent to construct a roadway for a subdivision um, which which filing is this this is 33 HC 30 HCC 33 okay um,
since uh, we last met, you know, have been uh, we've been working in, in front of the planning board to uh, to review the stormwater management. So we're still in that process. Mm -hmm. We were there last night. The meeting got continued till uh, June twelfth. Uh, we'll a uh, couple of the issues that are remaining that uh, we've. Uh, working through at this point is that um, we're going to be making a uh, uh, emergency connection to Maple Street Extension and that change has to be reviewed both for additional drainage criteria and with uh, the fire chief, police and fire. So okay. um, nothing really has changed we don't know what the final uh, decisions will be by the planning board regarding the waivers that we requested. Mm -hmm. So this may change. They've talked about adding a sidewalk and doing some other things within the right of way. So um, we would ask that we continue this uh, until after, that June until third. after the planning board has made a decision. So okay. um, I don't know when you meet in June, but it will have to be after June 12th. So June oh, so 18th. Do you want to open this? Do you want to just? Are you just asking for a continuation? Yeah, I'm just. Well, I just want to bring the commission up to date because we haven't been here for a while. So I'm just. Oh. Uh, so since we're continuing it, we might as well open it and continue just so the commission knows what we're. Okay. What All the right. process is, uh, and what we're going through at this point. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So no, we there's really that. no exchange information. I'm just thinking, you know, from a, an attendance for each public hearing. Sounds like it's more just like a, you know, it was just an informal of, of the plan that's already on file. Uh, are you yeah. talking about in terms of members being eligible to? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, because there's a member not here, and that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, like you folks, checking off the attendance yeah. for this. You folks do the Mullen. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so. yeah. So. I, I, I don't. You know, it's it's. Uh, I, I don't know how many how many people are eligible on this, right now. That yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm getting right now. There's four. I think, yeah, right? the five that are sitting here: Kerry, Ed. Well, Ed, Jim's not here, so you'd lose him. So right now, there's one, two, three, four, five. But if this was a public hearing where you, you know, you're you really exchanging, yeah. you lose yeah. Jim, so they'd be down to four, which is a, you know, that's a quorum. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, however, yes. however you want to handle it. Um, so you just gave us an update on where you are in the process with the planning board. So that's right. great. You know, we appreciate that. And then we'll just continue it to June 18th, and then we don't yeah. run into the issue with right. the. Hopefully we'll have, all right. Hopefully so. we'll have resolution between now and then, there. and we'll uh, submit back to the commission a re the revised a revised plan so it can be reviewed by your uh, consultant. Okay. I have so, Lou, what date was there you were yep. looking for? Because the commission meeting on the fourth, the and then the meeting on the the June eighteenth. Yeah, June eighteenth. Yeah, okay. Right. The, the, so. Which one? The number nine one. How that differs from what we've seen, right? That's when we opened last time, but they weren't here, right? Yeah, we opened it and then continued it. Okay. Right. And now we're yeah. going to talk about thirty-nine. We're going to talk about tonight. Okay, so that's a separate file. That's a separate file. Ah. Oh. Okay, got it. As well, so. Jeff, so we're still going to talk about comment? 39? Yeah. We're going to talk about 39. Okay. Now Since I'm that's tracking. A, that's a separate, separate yeah. issue. So just before okay. you put that away, so if, if you potentially there's going to be additional work in the Maple Street Extension area, um, there are definitely additional wetlands down in that area. Yeah, we're not proposing any work. In that, I think there's wetlands down in this particular area. I think you're talking. About. Yeah, I think they, I think they extend up fairly close to Buckland Street, actually. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take a look. I'll have them take a look. I'll have Paul take a look at okay. it, and if there is. But right now, it's, it's cleared all the way straight through to. We're just talking about maybe some grading there that's going to allow for access for emergency vehicle to get through there. Okay, but I think yeah. you know just I'll, I'll consistent this, with everything. I think. Yeah, I'll take I'll take a look, look at, at that. Okay, and good. See where that goes. Okay. So um, for now, uh, really t tonight, uh, HC thirty nine is what we filed. Yeah. Lou, before we get, can we just close these out. I'll just get yeah. you. Um, so with the other ones, um, the, the on the agenda, ones. you got 35, 36, 37, 38. Do you want to continue those out? To yeah. 
uh, June 18th as well? Correct. All right, so I'll just put those dates in. If you can give me a John Hancock, we'll continue sure. those. So we're going to go to six. Okay, so all those will be continued, and then just for the audience's um, information, we have um, zero Leonard Street. This is a continuation of, no of a notice of intent for a right of way, um, Thank you. and for the removal of a drain pipe to widen the gravel road and install a berm. So that's what we're going to be discussing next. We were able to uh, get uh, the comments from uh, Matt, and we did make some changes to the plan. So I'm going to just open those up uh, so the commission has them. We can talk about. Before we get into that, um, in my letter, uh, just wanted the commission to see if they were uh, in agreement with the uh, with the filing fees that Mr. Uh, Rosie submitted. We got some dialogue. It was listed as um, one minor residential um, project for filing fee of fifty dollars. And the, um, the the description was an existing drain drain pipe to be removed, existing gravel road to be regraded, and an earth and an installation of an earthen berm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys thought that was one item or three. I think that would be three items done is my sense. Move the drain pipe. The road widening and the Berm. There are at least two items. You know, the maybe the road widening in the berm, a one, and then the removal of the drain pipe. Does that makes sense. Whatever you guys think, uh, it's kind of unique, you know. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What do you think, Melissa? Carrie. Last year, so I'm going to defer to you. <laughs> What's that? It's hard so without kind of knowing what we're talking about and how related they are. <laughs> yeah, then well, you could wait till the end. Can we you do know? that? Yeah, you can, can table we? that. I think sure, we, definitely. Yeah. That's a good idea. I right, well, yeah, we'll we'll Okay. We're already I'm paying quite a bit of money lately. Everything's uh, yeah. I mean, got to stand on its own. Luke. No kidding. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind. So um, uh, we received uh, what this project, uh, this notice of intent is all about is to uh, uh, remove the improper drainage that's uh, entering onto our property and to uh, protect the property from any further uh, surface runoff that's uh, entering the property inappropriately. Um, to do that, we are going to this whatever the commission knows. Uh, there's a drain pipe that enters under Leonard Street um, onto our property without the benefit of uh, any permission or authorization or easement or uh, license. And that, uh, in our opinion, has resulted in the creation of this wetland that's on our property. Mm -hmm. And so we're um, we're approaching the commission to remove the pipe and establish a regrading of the roadway because the uh, homeowners on the opposite side of Leonard Street have used uh, our property as a dumping ground for their surface or for their groundwater and other runoff that's um, from their properties and their driveways. So we're intending on regrading the roadway and creating a uh, berm swale along the edge of the roadway that will deter any water from um, being released onto our property. Uh, 
what we've, uh, from the comments that were received, um, we provided an additional detail that, um, that was looking for relative to the berm and how the road will be regraded and uh, with a stone trench along the uh, edge of the road go in front of the berm. berm. And so that, in our opinion, would uh, protect our property from uh, any further discharge of water onto it. That's essentially the That's it in a nutshell? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, So I'm just referencing uh, Lucas's comments here. There were some administrative um, cleanup items that needed to be taken care of under the application. Jeff, if, yeah. if I could just on uh, number two. Uh, so subsequent to th this um, memo, Don and I did go out and, and take a look at the area. And although the wetland boundaries on the site itself, on the main site, Mr. Petrosi's main property, have been approved by an ANRAD, there are wetlands on the other side of Leonard Street um, that are not shown on the plan, and that should be delineated. Okay. Well, we're not, not going to delineate those. That's other property. This is a this is a project that is restricted to the right of way. Um, we're not we're not going to be uh, flagging other uh, wetlands that are completely unrelated to the project. Okay. There were then well within 100 feet, if not 25 feet of the proposed work. I've got a plan from the uh, file number 1881207. It shows the existing gravel driveway and buttons very close right up to the edge. What's the date on that, Don? Do you know? Uh, Is it recent or fairly old? Well, it's, it was bylaw vintage. Okay. So, uh, 2004. 2004. Okay. So, and this was depicted as a BBW, and the application's only filed as under the, the bylaw. So isolated. Might be jurisdictional under the Act as well. Okay. All right, so you should have your consultant take a look at that. Um, Number six on the comments, details or specifications on the earthen berm. Uh, we don't have anything to review on that. Oh, we provided the detail on the, on the revised plan. Okay. So that's on this plan here. Got it. And this is the first we've seen. You haven't seen Yeah, yeah. No, this is like stuff. Sorry about that. Would you be able to send a, Lou, would you be able to send a yeah. PDF? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we can take a look at that, Matt. Um, state's gravel road to re be regraded or refurbished to a width of 16 feet wide with a two, wide, two foot wide berm along the gutter. Um, no further detail on what is meant by refurbishment. So we need some clarification on that. Um, and then comment number eight. Um, recommendation that the applicant demonstrate that the isolated wetlands on site will not be adversely impacted by reductions in natural overland flow due to the installation of the earth and berm. So we need some clarification on that as well. I, I don't understand why you need clarification on that. We, we know that the water is discharged onto the property and it's causing a wetland, mm -hmm. which, which is not being done under appropriate terms and conditions so those that needs to stop and if the isolated wetland shouldn't be there then the isolated wetland will go away the way it should be so. 
Okay. All right, and then um, you know we would want Beta to do a peer review of this as well. Um, the fee that they're proposing is two thousand nine hundred and fifty. No, we're not. We're not paying any fee for Beta to review this. This is. We have two basic choices here. Uh, we can cooperate with this, or we'll we'll go into court for an injunction to remove the pipe. Which the, we were trying to be cooperative with the commission and do some things according to your rules and do some protections. This is a common practice for an engineering peer I mean, review. Not, we've we've paid uh, quite a bit of money to Bader already to review the drainage on this site, which encompasses not just this site, but Upland. They we've performed a complete drainage study as part of the stormwater management permit. But I think it's unnecessary for us to do any further review of the drainage that is in the watershed here. Okay, we'll make a note of that for the record. Um, comments, questions from the commission at this point? My only question is, um, can you clarify who owns the street itself? It's a private way. So you own both, it? Both parties own, uh, on either side own to the middle. So are you proposing to do I can't see the under, property lines. Anything on under so. the under the statute, uh, we have the right to improve the right of way and do whatever is necessary. It doesn't matter which side of the roadway we are on. We have the right to improve the way as we uh, see fit. So the property owners on the south side of Leonard Street own to the center line? They have rights to the middle, yes. They have rights to the middle? Yes, we have rights to the middle as And well. have they chimed in on this plan? That's why. We're not contacting them. The other, the other parties who are doing the illegal game. I'm just because they have their ownership. It's kind of, we don't, we don't well, we, actually, we've been getting a lot of filings lately where people are proposing to do stuff on land that they don't own, and it's yeah. not really... I don't make the laws, we just follow them. Through the chair, my only comment, you acquired this land about 1995? 98. 98. Um, and this drainage was put in 20 years before that. And when you yeah. bought the land, the deed says with all, whatever the fancy word is, um, it was there, you bought it. Well, uh, we'll let the judge decide who's responsible. I don't think that's your, I mean, I respect your opinion, but I don't think you're in a position to make that determination as to whether or not it's there properly or not. We believe that it's not. Okay. All right, um, questions, comments from the audience? I have a few, Thomas Terry, 17. Maple Street, on the abutter to the west, the fields down toward the tr toward the trail, and it looks like this. What's it? An earthen berm? Is it to be a swale, or is the water just going to run across the, the dirt road, or what? And where is it going to end up? Processed gravel um, is the top four inches. The eight inches. The subsurface below that is clean bank gravel. Is it going to be reconstructed or just rebuilt? <coughs> just uh, is it going to stay? Is it going to, is it going to be a 16-foot road, uh, new construction up to present specifications, or it's going, it's, to remain, it's going to remain a gravel road? We're going to regrade it so that every all of the uh, work that's been done over the past many years will not allow water to discharge onto our side of the property. Where no, will, will, will the water discharge? The water will chair. discharge or will go down the roadway just like it. To yeah. whose land? To whoever's downstream. It could be yours. It could be it's in the, It's going to remain in the right of way. Looks like it's going to go on to uh, Thomas Terry's property. Looks that way. You're not going to continue the berm and the so-called swale, are you, to all the way to the railroad? Oh, no, bed? no. So you're going to stop it, what, on your land? Or on no, we're stopping it uh, somewhere in this vicinity before we get to your property line. So it's going to stop in here? 
Yeah. And that's proposed as an earthen berm. What's an earthen berm? Just made out of dirt, gravel dirt. How much? How high? 12 inches. 12 inches. About 12 inches high to a couple of feet wide. Who's going, to over. who's going to maintain that in the future? Private way. People. What people? People who own, 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 own travel on the right of way. You know. The people who own the new Buckland houses? Uh, we haven't gotten that far yet. This is totally unrelated to that. That would be, well, that'd be a planning board question. The words, in the application of the referred here tonight, in entering inappropriately uh, onto someone else's land. It was acknowledged that the pipe was coming across and entering inappropriately. It seems to me that the water's just going to be put somewhere else inappropriately. So I'm a little concerned, and I know we're just in the beginning stages of this discussion, but I just wanted to be noted. And that paper that you have, did you have, is that a beta uh, that you had there, the recommendations? Has somebody already looked at this? This is just a proposal from beta to do the review of this. Oh, they, they have been contacted and engaged to, to review it? Not engaged, no. 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 So they submitted a proposal to the commission um, with their fee for reviewing this. Oh, I see. Uh, but Mr. P uh, Petruzzi has declined to have them um, do that work. So. Isn't it mandatory? It's required by the commission, um, but we can't force Mr. Petruzzi to do it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm uh, Linda Conley. I live at 56 Pleasant, so I'm, I'm in a butter to, to Buckland Street. And I just wanted to comment that um, we visited the assessor's office a couple weeks ago, and we, my family's been paying taxes on half of Buckland Street for, I don't know, more than 20 years now. So there is confusion as to who owns this, this way in also. Okay. I don't know if this is the time to discuss that. That's just... That's not really under the purview not, of, the, okay. of the Conservation Commission. That would be um, Planning Board. Okay. But thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we'll continue this to June 18th. Is that what well, you... Well. I mean, things are happening, so I can't guarantee you that on June 18th we'll still be back here, but I'll continue to June 18th. Okay. Through the chair, I just yeah. wanted to uh, clarify in regard the, to Carrie's question about um, the, the property situation. So the, the current plan that we have, um, in the, I'm just sort of basically identifies the 30-foot right away. Labels of this Leonard Street, so it's really you know you're not really sure you know, what's what's public and what's private. Right. On, the, on the town's GIS, it's sort of just indicating you know from pretty much from the pro corner of the property line here, that would be the uh, you know the, the private way, and the public way would be here. And we did have um, so the brown is the public and the green is the private. Don? Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, I, I had a couple other layers turned on. Just uh, these okay. were. Uh, some underground utilities. Hmm. So basically, the the, the roads. Um, yeah, I know that's that's so, poor. Uh, let me open up another GIS. But the green so section there is the yeah, the, yeah along exactly, that portion yeah. of the property. That's right. The so if way. I turn off those layers, it would just be a white line. Right. You yeah, know. Got it, so yeah. if I turn these layers off, it would be a white line. Got it. So um, and then on uh, the we've got a plan from um, um, April where it depicts um, the property, I'll just sort of zoom in, where it doesn't really define the, the right of way here like on the other one, but uh, it defines Leonard Street as a public way, varied width, mm -hmm. and there's a line here, so I'm not quite sure. So well, I can, yeah, a little bit. Well, you know, we've, we've uh, asked the town to provide us with the information regarding the acceptance of Leonard Street as a public way um, and for any plans that they've recorded or uh, that depicted the boundaries of Leonard Street, which 
uh, Leonard Street was accepted by the town, I think, in 1926 as a public way. There are no plans that uh, meets and bounds that would describe Leonard Street. This is the historical uh, depiction that has been on the plans uh, that have been endorsed by the planning board for many years of mm -hmm. showing where the limit of the public way versus the private way mm -hmm. is located. Uh, but there is no, um, I think the acceptance of the roadway just said up to the boundary of somebody's, uh, somebody's Leonard's house. Okay. So there's really no, uh, we've asked for the information, but we um, hasn't been provided to us, so. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Yes, Mr. Terry. One more question, question, please. Sure. Um, has anyone looked into the possibility of diverting all this water over to Pleasant Street? Um, if you put up that previous slide uh, that, that showed the, the, the general area, yeah. Is there a pointer here? Excuse me. Be careful, it's dangerous. <laughs> How do you work this thing? Just it's a little point. button way down at the end. No, at the other end. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's the place you're talking about right there. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the water starts. The, the water comes across the road here. Mm -hmm. There's Box Hill Road right there. You could run that water. This is at an elevation. That corner is at an elevation of like 514. And if you get over here to Pleasant Street in this area here, it's 506. So you've got eight feet to run. Uh, first of all, the water is down below the, the ground level, so you probably have more than eight feet. So if you ran a trench or a pipe or a swale or whatever the engineer might over here, out, maybe out Buckland or through an easement through around here maybe, in some way that isn't too extravagant, Maybe the town would have to cooperate with that. Maybe this is the town's problem, and it's 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 not a it's not a Pedrosi problem. Yeah, that would. I mean, I I defer to the DPW on that, Mr. Terry. Um, and there's a lot of probably a lot of different options. Well, I was just suggesting yeah. to, that maybe the board might consider offering this as a, a, a suggestion to Mr. Pedrosi to look into. And I, if I remember right. At some point in conversations with Mr. Pedrosi, he did have his engineer look at it, and that was a, a feasible opportunity. Mm -hmm. Is that true, Lou? Well, let me just say this. Um, the, the, the whole uh, projects that we, we, we certainly can make a significant amount of improvements to the water situation that people are experiencing up in that area. Um, we just haven't been receiving any cooperation at the town level, so. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, quite honestly, uh, well, our role, you know, as you know, is not to propose, but to review, you know, the applications that come before us. So. True. true. Yeah. It's, it is, we've talked about in the past. This is a. Uh, this this commission has uh, discretionary. Um, authorization under their regulation and their bylaw and sometimes uh, discretion has to be exercised that's in the best uh, interest of not just the applicant but of neighbors and other in town mm -hmm. so um, when we get to that point and the town and the commission is ready to discuss some exercise of that discretion that would be I mean we're, we have a lot of possibilities here to make improvements but we're not going to throw dots at the wall and see which one is going to be uh, agreeable to the commission. Um, we need to have some maybe some informal discussions and get a gauge on what the commission is willing to explore or discuss. Um, we're willing to sit down and talk about that. But I think at this stage. Um, you know, this matter is proceeding in a different uh, direction, mm -hmm. so um, I, I, that's all I can tell you right now. We did make a request. I, I don't think you received that letter regarding documents. Yes, we did. Okay. 
Yeah, so we're working on that. Great. Thank you thank very you. much. Okay. We'll see you on the uh, 18. 18. 18. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Can I? So we're continuing this one too. Yeah, that's been that's been continued. Yeah. Don, I'll leave these two with you. I'll get a stamp on these and I'll and I'll uh, email those it to two. You. Uh, these, these are the revised, the most recent plan. I don't know, if, uh, Matt. You want to oh, take did you one? Just give me those. No, no. I gave you the ones that we filed originally. Oh, okay. yep. These are revised as of today. All right. Cool. Thank you. So you can stamp those in. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to throw a piece of G39. I get them all confused. I don't see many of them. waiting for you to uh, finish up there thank you okay so the draft minutes for april 30th did everyone get a chance to look at those probably not i just got them out on monday okay so let's table that until the next you meeting. Got it. Sure thing. and then the draft cr we got comments back from yeah we the just DCS. got them like right before the last meeting so i had them on the ci i should probably should have put it on the work session but i forgot to carry it sometimes i forget to carry over cr um, ca report items onto the but anyways yeah uh, it's been it's been two weeks i didn't know if the commission had any comments because uh i can reach i can reach back to the applicant's attorney and say that you know if you guys were okay with um, the state's comments I'll let them know that the Concom was okay with it. I think I'm fine with it. I didn't see anything that um, was really concerning. So okay. Um, yep. Same here. All right. I'll uh, I'll reach out to the um, applicant's attorney. Okay. And then uh, wanted to bring uh, to your attention um, the ERO. Miss mm -hmm. uh, Benara came in with uh, Mr. Mark. I think. Um, I could look through my uh, my agenda sometime in February or March, and we uh, went through all the um, points in the uh, email um, in regards to the stuff the the commission was uh, was looking for. Yeah. And um, then I I wrote to her. Um, on April 11th saying you know basically it was the expectation of the Commission that the restoration work would start this planting season I sent that April 11th I didn't get a response I sent a follow-up on May 2nd uh, saying you know basically the Commission needs you to respond to give them a, a time frame you know and um, no response no response so okay. I don't know if you guys wanted to reschedule an enforcement and fines here and Ever come in and see what time frame is going to be? So we did we compile the fees for her previously? I thought we sent a letter that outlined, you know, what the. I, I, I get the sense that you know she's just this isn't sinking in, <laughs> <laughs> and that you know this is just going to continue to drag out unless we do something other than. I mean, she's been in a few times already. Right. Yeah. No, because no, I, I, I don't think you guys ever went to a fines hearing. You know, and typically you would open up a fines hearing and then 
and then you would ask for it to be laid out. But every time she came in, she was cooperating and you know right. was saying, "Okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this." And um, so I don't. I could go through all you know all this information, but off the top of my head, I don't think we we didn't uh, come up with a number. Uh, no, it was all it was just outlined, you know. What she did, not right? Putting a okay. Cost to it. All right. No. Yeah. So maybe we have a command for a fines hearing. Okay. Well, yeah. We'll schedule it, and uh, mm -hmm. I can uh, I can write up a memo, um, and um, you guys can discuss it with her. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not in chair. <laughs> so I will, uh, You're doing a great job, though. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, schedule that for the first June meeting. Yeah, when I had met with uh, Homer on this over a year ago, over right? a year ago, I had recommended to her to cooperate and do what needs to be done, or eventually you're going to get to the point where the commission's going to need to issue fines. You know, of course, oh no, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. Right. But that was over a year ago, and I don't know how much. Don listed how much correspondence he's had with her would probably fill a whole page. So right. yeah. I think she's been in she's been in before us a couple times already. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and we're think, gonna lose another planting season. Right. Shortly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Probably too late for that now. Anything else, Don? No, I think um, that covers everything. Anything else from the commission I was, members? I was going to say, nice job on the MVP award. Yeah, that, that that application so looked good. No, I mean, we, we were awarded. Yeah, the, yeah. and that was great. Yeah. So now we just hire a consultant, right? Yeah, I think it's already yeah. probably in the, in the it works. It was Weston O'Neill that did the application, right? No, Weston and Sampson. Or Weston and Sampson. So I was certain that rolls into. All right, cool. All right, if we have a motion to adjourn, if there's nothing else. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.